On 2 July 1967, U.S. Marines were on patrol about a mile and a half northeast of Can Tien, near the demilitarized zone in South Vietnam. This was the beginning of Operation Buffalo. The Marines made contact with what they thought was a small, well-entrenched enemy unit. The contact soon evolved into a major attack by five North Vietnamese battalions employing mass artillery coordinated by ground attack forces. Of the nearly 400 Marines engaged that day, 84 were killed, nearly 200 were wounded, and nine went missing. It was the worst one-day loss for the Marines in Vietnam. July 3, 1967. Dearest Marilyn, I hardly know how to begin this letter. First of all, I want to tell you that I am fine and for you not to worry. Yesterday was a day and a half for me. My company, Bravo, was on the search and destroy sweep that I have been telling you about. We spent the night on the north side of the Strip. As we continued with our mission the morning of July 2nd, things really began to happen. We were ambushed by 4,000 of the North Vietnam Army. This count is not confirmed yet. We were later reinforced by other 1-9 companies. The battle raged all day until we were able to pull out our dead and wounded. I won't lie to you, we have many casualties. We lost a lot of good men, including our company commander. Everybody in my mortar section made it out alive, but most of us were wounded. I caught mortar shrapnel in my left arm and grenade shrapnel in my ears. It is nothing serious. Please don't let yourself get upset. Just take care of yourself and our baby inside you. I hope you get this letter before you hear from anybody else. You will probably get a letter notifying you that I have been wounded because they took my name. My wounds are light compared to most. I had to leave my pack behind with all my letters, pictures, film, Bible, etc. And I am sure the enemy got it. So if you should get any fictitious letters telling you that I have been killed or captured, don't believe anything you hear unless it is from me. If something like this should happen, contact the Red Cross to check it out. I will let you know more later, but for now, do not believe what you hear from TV or anywhere. You can be proud of your husband. We fought a good fight, and I earned a Purple Heart. I am back at Kanshan again and think I will be going back to Dong Ha soon. Honey, just know that I am fine, and if you do not hear from me like you should, it is because of my location and me having to borrow riding gear. Honey, I love you with all my heart. You will always be the most precious thing to me in the whole world. I miss you more each day, and I'm still hoping the time will go fast so I can hurry home to you and our little one. Take care of yourself, and don't worry about me and stay mine. I love you, Daryl. Marilyn writes, I was home alone when the doorbell rang. I went to the door to find a Western Union man with a telegram in his hand. I asked, who is the telegram for? Marilyn Horn, he answered. Who is it from, I demanded. He replied, the Commandant of the Marine Corps. I felt like my heart had stopped. I remembered hearing about women who had received notice of their husband's death by telegram. Instantly fear overcame me. I told the young man, I'm here alone, so you will have to come back in about 30 minutes when my parents come home for lunch. Then I will sign for the telegram. I cannot leave without you signing and taking this telegram, he explained. I said, then you will just have to wait. He sat down on the porch steps and I sat in the kitchen waiting for my parents. It was a long 30 minutes before they came home. When they arrived, I signed for the letter and he left. We went into the kitchen together where I opened the letter and began reading. When I realized it was telling me about the battle on July 2nd, all three of us were so relieved and thankful for this good news.